Welcome back to part two of chapter eight. We're still dealing with matrices um, and specifically operations with the matrices. Today though we're going to be looking at matrix multiplication. Um, matrix multiplication indicates a row by row um, type of multiplication. In other words, in order to multiply matrices, the number of columns of your first matrix has to equal the number of rows of the second matrix. If this is not the case, you cannot multiply the two matrices together. So if I want to multiply matrix A with matrix B, and matrix A is an M by N matrix, and matrix B is an N by P matrix. The columns of A have to equal the rows of B. So these two have to be the same in order for us to multiply. The result then, once we establish that these are equal, my new matrix, which would be the product AB, is going to have the dimensions of the rows of A and columns of B. So the dimensions of the product would be an M by P matrix. And we'll go over this um, in the next couple examples. Our first example that we're going to look at today says to find the product of AB where A is a 2 by 3 because I have two rows and then three columns that run vertically. Matrix B is a 3 by 2 because I have three rows and then two columns vertically. So again, in order to multiply, my inner dimensions have to be the same. So I have a 3 and a 3, so I am okay to multiply these. And my product, AB, looks like it's going to be a 2 by 2 matrix. As we mentioned before, matrix multiplication is a row by column um, multiplication. So what that means is I'm going to take this row right here and multiply it by the first column to get my first entry. So let's slide this up and when we do that we get, like I said, the first row by the first column. So I'm going to go 1 times a negative 2 plus 0 times 1 plus 3 times a negative 1, all of this for my first term. Then I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing for the next um, entry. I'm still going to use my first row, but now I'm going to use this second column. Sorry, this is for over here. So I'm going to go 1 times 4 plus 0 times 0 plus 3 times 1. So I have um, my first two entries of my, or the first row of my 2 by 2. Now I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing for my second row, except now I'm going to use this bottom row here and multiply it by the first column and then the second column. So to do that, I'm going to end up with 2 times a negative 2 plus a negative 1 times 1 plus a negative 2 times a negative 1. And that completes the first entry of the second row. Then to do this, the last entry, I'm still going to use this second row of A and multiply it by the second column of B. So now I have 2 times 4 plus a negative 1 times 0 plus a negative 2 times 1. And this 
completes my two by two matrix. Now all I have to do is simplify. So to simplify, I end up with one times two, or I'm sorry, a negative two is going to give me a negative two. Zero times one is gonna give me one, and three times a negative one is a negative three. So negative two, and that's actually a zero. Sorry, zero times one is zero there. So negative two plus zero plus a negative three is going to give me a negative five. Then I have one times four is four, zero times zero is zero, and three times one is three. So four plus three is seven. Now into the second row, I have two times a negative two is a negative four, negative one times one is a negative one, and negative two times a negative one is a positive two. So negative four plus a negative one is a negative five, plus two is going to give me a negative three, and two times four is eight, negative one times zero is zero, and negative two times one is a negative two, 8 plus a negative 2 is going to give me 6. So this right here is going to be the product of A and B. And again, I ended up with a 2 by 2 just like we predicted up here. For example 7, we have a 3 by 3 and we're going to multiply that by a 3 by 1 this should produce, again if I look at my outside dimensions here, a 3 by 1. So let's see how that works. I'm going to start out by multiplying the first row with the first and in this case one and only column. So when I do that, I end up with 6 times 1 which is 6, plus 2 times 2 which is 4, plus 0 times a negative 3 which is 0, then I'm going to go and multiply my second row by that same column and go 3 times 1 is 3 plus negative 1 times 2 is a negative 2 and 2 times a negative 3 is a negative 6. And for the final column, or final row with that column, I've got 1 times 1 is 1 plus 4 times 2 is 8 plus 6 times a negative 3 is a negative 18. So my final answer should give me 10, negative 5, and a negative 9, which is a 3 by 1 matrix as well. For part B, I see that I have three rows in two columns, or a 3 by 2 matrix, and I'm going to multiply that by three columns with two rows. Now, based on what we said earlier, we knew that our inner dimensions had to be the same. So here I have a 2 on the inside and a 3 on the inside because these are not the same. There is no solution for this because you cannot multiply the matrices that do not have the same inner dimensions. For example 8, we're going to be multiplying a 1 by 3 matrix with a 3 by 1. So I can see right here that I'm going to end up with a 3 by 3 matrix, or I'm sorry, a 1 by 1 matrix. My inner dimensions are the same with the 3s. So when I do this, I end up with 1 times 2, which is going to give me 2, plus a negative 2 times a negative 1 gives me a positive 2, and negative 3 times a positive 1 gives me a negative 3. So when I add all this up, I have 2 plus 2 is 4 minus 3, which gives me 1, and this is my 1 by 1 matrix. For part B, I see that I have a 3 by 1, and I'm multiplying these by a 1 by 3. The inner dimensions are the same and I see that my outer dimensions are going to produce 
a 3 by 3 matrix. So let's get started on this. So let's get started. I see that I have my first row by my first column, so 2 times 1 is 2. Then I'm going to multiply my first row by my second column, or 2 times a negative 2 is going to give me a negative 4. My first row by my third column is going to give me 2 times a negative 3, which is going to give me a negative 6. My second row times my first column is negative 1 times 1, or a negative 1. My second row times my second column is negative 1 times negative 2, or a positive 2. In my second row, third column is going to give me a negative 1 times negative 3, or a positive 3. And last but not least, I have my third row, first column is 1 times 1, or 1. Then I have my third row, second column, or 1 times negative 2 to get a negative 2. And then last, I have my third row, third column, or 1 times a negative 3, is a negative 3. And here's my 3 by 3 matrix. So the one thing I want you to recognize is that um, multiplication is not uh, commutative because I can't go matrix A times matrix B and get the same thing as if I go matrix B times matrix A. Here are a list of the properties. Again, these properties are listed out kind of in a neater fashion on page 594 of your textbook. Um, but what these properties pretty much tell you is that they're associative. Um, when you multiply, you can uh, the distributive property applies, and um, the associative property when you're dealing with scalars also applies. The last thing I want to cover with you out of section 8.2 before we go into the MME um, deals with taking a matrix um, and setting it up, or taking a system of e linear equations and setting it up as a matrix. Um, we are going to do more with this in section 8.3, but um, I just wanted to make sure that you were able to set them up because matrix multiplication can be used to help us solve linear systems. What we're specifically looking at doing is setting up our system of linear equations in the form of AX equals B. And if you recall from Algebra 2, matrix A is going to be the coefficient matrix. And the coefficients is just of everything out of your system. So if you want to think of having your X, your Y, and then your Z, and then I'm going to list my coefficients, everything below those X's and Y's and Z's. And recall if there's nothing in there for an X value, a Y value, or a Z value, in our matrix we still have to accommodate and plug in a zero. So if I look at this first row, I see that I have 1x, negative 2y, and 1z. For the second row, I have 0x, 1y, and 2z. And the third row gives me 2x, 3y, and a negative 2z. So again, this is our coefficient matrix. I'm then going to multiply my coefficient matrix by my variables, and this is the x matrix. So this is going to be x, y, and z, and then I'm going to set that equal to my constants, which were a negative 4, 4, and 2. So if we label these in terms of the ax equals b, this here is matrix A, this is matrix X, and this is matrix B. Um, and like as I mentioned earlier in section 8.3, we'll actually learn how to solve for X, Y, and Z. But right now I just want you to set these up. And this concludes section 8.2.